Hello? Anyone in there? No sense of humor. Ah, the strong and silent type, eh? Think you're safe behind that mask? Give me 20 minutes in a can opener, and I'll have you whimpering like a schoolgirl. You might like it. That's enough, patient. Guard, leave us. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Professor Hugo Strange, and you are... Two-Face. Catwoman. <laughs> Batman! We can play these games as long as you like. Great! I love games. Not in my facility, you won't. I'm offering you this opportunity to make a deal. I am fully aware of your condition. The last thing you have is time. But I can make your final days more comfortable. And in return, I'd be giving you... Uh... I wish to study you. I need to know why you are the way you are. <laughs> I don't have long, Doc. You're going to need more than some psycho mumbo-jumbo to get to the bottom of what's wrong with me. Oh, I have more than that. Much more. So, do we have a deal? How are you feeling today? You promised me another doctor, Strange. Maybe you shouldn't have killed the one I sent last week. What made you do it? Fish gotta swim, birds gotta fly. Besides, it was worth it to see the look on her face. Hey, you know what? I think I've got a piece of it here in my pocket. You are trying my patience. That was the third doctor you've killed. Well, keep on sending them, Doc. I'm trying to break my record. I think it is time for you to do something for me. <laughs> Name it, Doc. Tell me how you came to be. Explain what made you what you are today. How you come to be sitting across the table from me. Dying. Is that all? Well, I guess you could say I once had a very bad day. Really? Go on. It was a Thursday night. Things had been getting worse. I was three days from the bank foreclosing on my home. The chemical plant I worked nights at was about to lay off half the workforce. And I was sitting in the hospital, holding the hand of my pregnant wife, wishing to God that she wasn't dead. That must have been upsetting for you. Probably was. Back then, though, all I knew was that if I didn't let old man Falcone's men into the plant that night, they'd have killed me, too. So here's the thing. I had to decide. Could I live without her? Was there any point going on? I've got to admit it. I was scared. Not of being dead, you understand. No one would blame you if you were. It is perfectly common. Do I look common? No. I was scared of the part just before you die, when you don't know what is about to happen, when you're desperately clutching at life and trying to hold on with slippery, blood-covered hands. So I made a decision right there. And what was that? That? Well, that... <coughs> is a story for another day, Strange. I think I may need to see a doctor. Get me one. You were telling me about the night your wife died. Oh, no, Hugo. As I recall, I was waiting for you to send me another doctor. We both know I have sent you three more doctors. Did you? Yes. One was left dismembered outside the elevator to my office. The other two have not been seen since they were sent to you. How careless. Listen, Doc. Professor. Okay, Professor. I'll give you a little more. I just hope you're taking notes. It's the day after, and I'm standing in the freezing rain, just staring at the chemical plant, feeling numb. Jeannie was dead. It didn't seem real. I can remember the day I first met her, her infectious smile as I told her bad joke after bad joke, how 
Even after living with the pathetic wretch I was, she still wanted my child. And then they arrived. <laughs> Reality's way of yanking me another wedgie. Falcone's men told me to cheer up. He said, things could be worse. I asked him how. He grabbed me by the collar, pulled me close. He'd been eating garlic, and each word stank as he threatened to perform oral surgery on me with a nail and a brick. A creative guy. They hand me a box. I remember thinking it was heavy. Was it a bomb? A gun? I'd never used a gun before. Were they that heavy? And what was in the box? How's that doctor coming along? I'll get you one. And when you do, I'll tell you the rest. You are looking a little better, yes. Well, I have my good days and bad days, but I do try and start each one with a smile. <laughs> are you ready to continue your story? Yeah, why not? So where was I? The box. Ah, yes, the box. <laughs> so there I was, tearing open this box, expecting the worst. And all it had in it was a crazy red dome and a cloak. <laughs> ah, I thought they were having a joke with me, but oh no. They made me put it on. They said it was a disguise. It would keep me safe. It smelled like garlic. And that was it, really. I was dressed up like a spaceman, barely able to see, trying to break into the one place in this town that had given me a job. Have you ever tried to walk with an enormous fishbowl on your head? Don't answer that. It's hard. I couldn't see where I was going. I must have tripped one of the alarms. I heard muffled gunfire. I panicked and tried to run. And then I saw him. Who? That man. Really? Yes, really. Batman tried to hit me. I moved out of the way, but, well, what you need to understand is I had this giant bowl on my head, and I lost my balance. It's like life, really. One minute everything's bad, and the next your wife's dead and you're hanging on for dear life, suspended over a tank of experimental chemicals. I'm sure he'd say he tried to save me, but we all know he didn't. I fell for a second... Just as I hit the surface, I thought I may just get away with this. I assume that wasn't the case. Do I look like I got away with it? 